What if you could create more kindness in the world just by being you? Everyone has the potential to create and receive more kindness. What if kindness is more than being nice and compassionate to others? Have you ever considered what having more kindness for you could create in your life? Get ready to learn how the energy of kindness is integral to reducing stress in your life and how it can assist in healing your body. Now, here is the host of Cultivating Kindness with Karen, facilitator of healing, Karen Leslie. Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for being here with me. We have another fantastic day here on Cultivating Kindness with Karen. And of course, I'm Karen Leslie, your host for the next 55 minutes or so. We have lots to talk about today. We've been on a little bit of a theme of angels Recording over the in last progress. Few And so we're going to continue with um, angels a little bit today. And we're going to have, um, I don't know, a slightly different conversation on it with them. So I hope you will enjoy this and that you'll stay with me for the next little while as we explore awakening your heart. Now, there's so many different ways that we can look at this topic. There's, well, there's just so many. And we're going to get into a few of them. I have a couple of ideas as to how I want to be looking at this. But of course, the angels, spirit guides of mine and of yours, you know, they're all going to show up. Yep, they're all showing up. And they're going to give us information and give me some guidance as well as to where I can be going with this topic for you today. And this is one of the really wonderful things about showing up live and listening to the show every week. When you join, I pick up on the, the energies of those who are here with me, and I can pick up on, on your guides. Now, I don't go looking for anything specific. It's just like a, an awareness, because I could be very present, and ideas come into my mind, and often, they're not an idea or something I would traditionally think about which is one of the indications to me that it's coming from either my own guides or from those of you who are here joining us every week. It is such a pleasure to actually be able to be with you like this. So, all right. So let's have a, a look at what it was here that I was promising that we would talk about as a bit of a, um, a starting off point because there's so much we can do. So, when I was advertising about the show, I was saying, you know, to awaken your heart involves a lot of trust. And it really does. If that's something you struggle with, then we're going to be approaching that and looking at that as well during the show. And, you know, you can always come in to the Inspired Choices Network um, forward slash chat room and you can ask your questions. And I would really encourage you to do so if you can. So you need to have this ability to trust in yourself and also to trust in divine or a higher power or whatever wording works for you. But just that knowing that there's something else out there beyond yourself. Now, for anyone who's experienced, you know, heartbreak or trauma or some form of pain, this idea of trusting, it can be a, a slower process for you. It can take a little bit more time. It can take more trust. Digging down a little deeper to find that space within you that you can trust. You know, it'd be natural to be a little more guarded. I totally understand. I've had times where I've been very guarded not open to a lot of trust of myself or others. And I've been actually, um, what's the word I want to use? I'm hearing just the word accused. That sounds a little harsh though, but I've had people say to me, um, especially in the energy work circle that I've been in for over 25 years, that I'm unwilling to receive, that I am, I'm unwilling 
to actually participate in what I'm learning. But nowhere did I have anybody actually ask me any questions about that. And that what came across as being unwilling was my own fears in trusting. Now, eventually, I worked through it. And you can too, if you would like to. And it has gotten me to the place where my own heart has awakened. And I'm hearing right now that it will continue to awaken. It is an ongoing process for most of us. An awakened heart is like an empowered heart. It's living from this space and it's filled with compassion. And when you get there, it really expands your whole sense of purpose. Um, you get a greater insight or a, a different way of looking at what your life's purpose is. It helps you when you have this empowered heart to see the world in a different way. As a result, your ability to impact the world will change and grow and may actually look very different than you thought it might. We're going to look at, okay, sounds fine, Karen, but like, how do we do this? We're going to talk about that. And we're also going to um, investigate the world of angels a little bit more. And I know in past episodes, I have talked about uh, Archangel Ariel and how she's an angel that I go to quite a bit for assistance and guidance and things that way. And I'm going to introduce you to a series of nine different healing angels that I work with this week as well. So lots is going on. And it's quite exciting. So this whole idea of trust, I think I want to investigate that a little bit here right now. Depending on where you've come from, I mean, actually that could be literally uh, what country you are in around the world, um, what type of home you grew up in, um, the type of people that were in your life as you were growing up, all of these different, I guess I'm going to call them reference points, will impact everyone's comfort level with trust. Now, some people will have a very strong, strong level of trust within themselves, but they're very untrusting of others or the world around them. And you may have grown up where you had to be very, very aware of your environment for your own safety or protection. And that could be from absolutely anything. And that can be from something that's real and tangible. And it also can be from something that your mind has created for you that feels so real that you feel that you need to protect yourself from that as well. It's really important to remember that our mind, it does not know the difference between what is real, like my microphone sitting here beside me, or I could just be envisioning a microphone here and have the intention that everything's going to work out fine. My brain will not necessarily remind me to go get my mic if I already think it's, it's here and in place and working. Maybe an odd example, but that is the one that came in. When we struggle a bit with trust, one of the very fundamental places to start is to really understand what is it that you are fearful of, untrusting of, um, to recognize situations and circumstances in your life that is holding that in place for you, that belief. And mm, truly, like, where would you like to go with it? Now, there is no right or wrong time to start to build that trust within yourself. It really and truly is up to you. And I would encourage you to really embody that, like to really believe 
that you are the one that can choose when to change things. We can all have so many people telling us when it is a good idea to do something. You know, you've been thinking this way for so long, you need to change this. Or you've been behaving like this for decades. When are you going to get over it and change this behavior? Sometimes that's going to come from a truly loving space where they want to help you. Other times it's going to come from a space of, of frustration or anger or whatever that person's personal agenda may be. Neither matter. It doesn't matter. What's important is for you to understand that you are the one that can make the choice when you are ready. And you can make the choice in small increments. You don't have to just jump right in and have this expectation of almost like overwhelming change coming forward for yourself. Some people that works for, and for some, no, it really backfires. So taking small steps in the beginning and giving yourself just little increments to try and to pause, Check in, how are you doing? How's it feeling? All right, it's okay, cool. Would you like to try another little space? Another little step? And you can move through very gently that way if you want as well. Now, of course, you can work with different people to help you with building that trust within yourself. I'm one of them. I do this with a lot of people. When we have these fears or this inability to trust, we have left the connection with our body and we've moved very much into relying on the mind, looking at it as the ultimate source of information for you to guide you. That's so backwards, but that's what we're taught to do. The mind will work on keeping you where you currently are, that's its job. It likes safety. So however it figures it's giving you safety, which then can lead to trust, it's going to do that, whether it's actually working well for you or not. The body, on the other hand, is fantastic at giving you a different type of information that is far more reliable than what your mind will give you. Now, this takes practice to get there. There's no question about it. And when you're first learning, you're going to use a combination of the two. You, you just will. And that's okay. Learning to discern between what is working for you and what isn't, and not just relying on opinions from others or the thoughts that you are getting or thinking is key. This... Um, Connecting into our heart. Part of me wants to say it's not for the faint of heart. But there's a bigger part of me that says no. Like, yes, it can be uh, a journey that has some bumps along the way. Yes, you can discover things about yourself that may be a little uncomfortable or even perhaps very uncomfortable. Again, this is why working with somebody is is excellent. But it can also be filled with ease and it can be filled with with fun and just general feel good feelings. And the more we expose ourselves to these feel good feelings, then the more the body starts to respond and give us information to keep moving forward. This uh, relationship between heart and spirit and body is genuinely beautiful. It can transform anything you are dealing with. That's my opinion. When you have that connection of spirit, heart, and body, you can transform anything. Will it take you some practice? Yes, most likely. But you can do it. We're going to go to our first break. Thank you so much for being here with me on the Inspired Choices Network. 
As I said, my name is Karen Leslie. You can always send me an email if you like. It's super simple. Karen at karenlesley.ca. And Leslie is spelled L-E-S-L-I-E. -E. Please write to me. I would be happy to connect with you that way, answer questions for you, um, offer you a little bit of support. You need to make the choice that you want to connect and that you want to send that email. And I hope you do. So don't go away, everyone. We have a lot to investigate here on Awakening Our Hearts. We'll just be a couple of minutes with a couple of short commercials, and then we'll carry on this very heartfelt conversation together. All right, we'll be right back, everybody. We all have different experiences with and definitions of kindness. These experiences and beliefs about kindness have influenced who we are today and how we see the world. The universe is always listening. So what are you telling the universe today? Tune in to Cultivating Kindness with Karen. Each week as Karen guides you to understanding how each choice you are making is either keeping you stuck or opening up the energy of empowerment for you. Listen to Cultivating Kindness with Karen. Wednesdays at 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1 p.m. Central Time, 12 p.m. Mountain Time, 11 a.m. Pacific Time on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Are you a subject matter expert? Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspire Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. Professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world knowing your voice matters and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. Eager to hear your message, the world awaits. Contact us today to become an Inspired Choices Network radio host. Email become a host at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. This is Cultivating Kindness with Karen. To participate in the program, join the live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also send an email to karen at karenlesley.ca. Now, back to the program. Welcome back, everybody. All right, I'm going to just dive right in here. I talked about trust in the first segment. Uh, and if you've just joined, it really would be worthwhile going back and listening to that. Um, but I want to investigate a slightly different side of that now with you. Sometimes it's easier for people to understand what isn't quite working for them than looking to figure out how to connect into that positive comfortable or happy way of being because for many of us it's quite new it can be very foreign it can actually feel really uncomfortable and I know that that was the case for me for a long long time and I'm asking people you know to to start connecting into their body and uh, learning what is their yes when their body speaks to them and what is their no I would say Easily, eight out of 10 times, it is easier for the people to know what their no is than to be able to discern what is a yes coming from their body. And that is just based on how we tend to live. It's not right or wrong. So let's look at this mm, quasi no side of things right now. One of the ways to know that you are not connected to your heart or you're not in that space of an awakened heart or empowered heart is when you are feeling a variety of emotions or feelings that are not comfortable. You may be feeling sad. You may be having depression, anger, uh, feeling isolated, feeling fear. It can be anything like that. Those ways of feeling really present themselves to us when we disconnect from our heart, from spirit, whether it's angels, source, God, however that shows up for you, creator. 
and your body. When we hang out just in our mind, it's really easy, super simple to go into those other emotions or ways of feeling, especially if you have a bit of a history with them, if you've been in that space for a while, like if, if you're very easy to anger or you've had bouts of depression and so your body understands what that feels like and your mind has learned the cues for what it feels like when depression is setting in or may be with you. When that happens, this can be the indication to you that that you just you've pulled away from these other sources of support for you. Nothing wrong with it. We all do it. And to be honest, at times it can be very helpful. Like there's very appropriate times when anger is the right thing to pop up instantaneously. And you are going to go more into the mind and the way of thinking in that moment. Not a problem. It can be life-saving. It can be defending in a way that's critical in that moment. So it's good to, as I was saying, and I've said over the last few weeks, to be able to discern what it is that's going on. There's also times when you may be in a, a situation of an emergency and you are going to react in a way to take charge or help somebody or get something accomplished as quickly and as efficiently as possible. You are going to go into the mind, into those thoughts. Now, with both those, you're going to feel it in your body. Your, your heart rate could go up. I mean, you could start to actually feel a little bit of anxiety, a little bit with it. And then you get into the action mode and those things kind of go to the back burner, so to speak. And you're very present in that emotion. Then when it's served its time, it's served its purpose. Now you need to recognize, all right, let's reconnect. Let's go back into that awakened heart. When you go back into that awakened heart, you will then access amazing support and information that are the next follow-up steps to that situation that you just responded to. So when you feel hopeless, you just don't know what to do, or just in that space of nothingness, just like blah, right? All of this is an indication for you to check in. Now, I was going to say this later, but I'm being asked to share with you, with, I'm sorry, share it with you right now. I have a, a YouTube channel just need to look up Karen Leslie. And on there, I have a video, which is called Heart Link. And it, it walks you through the steps to actually create a heart link for yourself. And now this is a very simple process, highly effective way to create a connection with spirit. Any spirit you want. If people don't have angels or, or a source that they want to connect to, I always recommend Archangel Ariel which I do say in the video, but I would recommend you go and, and look for my channel and listen to that video. Um, it's helped a lot of people. And when you're in that space of feeling disconnected, it's a really easy way to connect back in instantly, instantly. There's a hand mudra that you do where you just touch your thumb and your middle finger. Again, it's all explained and you connect in instantly. No thought required, no ABC steps that you have to do. So go and look for it. It really will be very, very helpful for you. When you connect in with an angel this way, with the heart um, link, it is also a lovely way for you to start to feel safer, to help you to start to trust. 
Now you may, if this is brand new to you, you may also feel a little uncomfortable. And that's okay too. For many people, the first time they, they feel that angelic support and that angelic love come into their body and in specifically into their heart, it can be overwhelming. It can, um, for some, it can bring tears. For some, it can bring fear. For some, it just brings immense joy and they don't know how to handle that emotion. Again, none of them are wrong, but you really need to explain experience it and be with it so that it becomes second nature for you. So that is a great space for starting to build trust in your heart. When we think about an awakened heart, it really is bringing us that information of expansion, allowing the more esoteric function of your heart to build and expand. Your heart may not actually grow like it does on the Grinch that stole Christmas, but it can feel like it does. Like when that angelic energy comes into your heart, your heart could actually feel heavy as it feels so full of that energy. And it's, it's quite unique. And most people get to the place where they actually love that feeling. There's the sense of, as I said, expansion, there's a greater sense of knowing who you are. Your barriers come down and that requirement that you may be carrying to actually hide from yourself or hide from others can soften. And it starts with softening within you, allowing you that extra strength to be vulnerable, to see the wounds or the hurt areas in your life and know that you can actually work with them and that you have the support around you to assist you. It's fabulous to have beings in bodies around us to help us. And it's also fabulous to have beings that no longer have a body around us to help us as well. When you connect in this way, overcoming obstacles is easier. Past pain and letdowns can be viewed in a new way and can be, oh, I'm hearing, take the sting out of them that you are used to feeling still when you go back to that memory. As I was saying in the first segment, this heart, spirit, body connection will empower you to overcome anything that comes your way. And I know that's a very bold statement. But from my experience, that is true. Now, I don't have the same experiences as all of you. That's also very true. But I've had enough that... I've put this to the test many times, and it's always been there for me. Setting up reminders for ourselves that when we start to struggle, that there are steps to take, such as the heart link, you know, reminders might be necessary because it will not be automatic for you in the beginning. It's like learning to do any new task. Will this be, you know, a little more personal? Yeah, in all likelihood it will be. But that doesn't mean it's more difficult. This idea of awakening your heart will help you in balancing. And we'll just go through this, then we're going to go to our break. But it will help you be in a place of balance. The awakened or empowered heart has that lovely balance between male and female energies. We have both, regardless of any gender we identify with. Every being has male and female energies and frequencies within us. Having them in balance is really important. Knowing we can shift more into one than other 
in different circumstances is great. And then come back into that balance. Also, you will have that space of balance between what is in your past and what is in your future. And that balance allows you to be more present. Key to be present. And the third area of balance is between divinity, however you phrase that, and the earth herself. It doesn't serve us to be always having out-of-body experiences or to be so in our head that we forget that we have a body. Whether you are believing in energy work or spirit or not, like people talk about, well, just they just want to escape the body. They just want to be out there in la-la land all the time. Well, sure, there can be a reprieve with going there, but we're not meant to live there, nor are we meant to live so attached to the earth that we forget that that other realm and side of us is there. They are both equally important. So this empowered or awakened heart provides this balance of male and female, future and past, and divinity and earth. And when that all comes together, you are strong. And this is why you can tackle anything that you would choose to do so. All right, we need to go for our second break. Thank you so much for being here again on the Inspired Choices Network with myself, Karen Leslie, on Cultivating Kindness with Karen. We will continue this chat about the awakened heart after these couple of short messages. And in the meantime, maybe just, just pause while you're listening. See if you can get a sense of where your heart is actually physically in your body, can you bring your attention to it? And I'm not just talking heart center for those of you who are aware of that. I mean, your actual physical heart. Can you connect? All right. I'll check in with you when we get back. All right. Don't go away. We'll be back in just a couple of minutes, everyone. Thanks so much. We all have different experiences with and definitions of kindness. These experiences and beliefs about kindness have influenced who we are today and how we see the world. The universe is always listening. So what are you telling the universe today? Tune in to Cultivating Kindness with Karen. Each week as Karen guides you to understanding how each choice you are making is either keeping you stuck or opening up the energy of empowerment for you. Listen to Cultivating Kindness with Karen. Wednesdays at 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1 p.m. Central Time, 12 p.m. Mountain Time, 11 a.m. Pacific Time on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. How wonderful would it be to carry your favorite Inspired Choices Network host with you throughout your day? Well, now you can. Inspired Choices Network now has its very own mobile app. Our free app offers live streaming shows, along with thousands of podcasts and TV episodes. Our shows cover a wide variety of topics. Whether you're waking up with us, carrying us through the day, and taking us to bed with you, we're always here for you to enjoy. We're easy to find. Just search for Inspired Choices Network in the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. This is Cultivating Kindness with Karen. To participate in the program, join the live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also send an email to karen at karenlesley.ca. Now, back to the program. Welcome back. I remembered during the uh, our, our little break there that in the first segment, I said I would actually introduce you to um, the nine angels that I work with, with some of the work that I do. And yeah, I completely forgot. I got off on another tangent, but they reminded me <laughs> during the the break with my my itchy nose that I get when spirit sometimes speaks to me. So I'm not going to go into any lengthy descriptions of any of them, but I, I will give you their names and their healing gift. And I think we'll just 
Yeah, we'll do, leave it that way. So Angel Ariel, which I've mentioned before, like she's the angel that really helps you with seeing your soul's mission, which is why I recommend her with the heart link. Now, you can also build a heart link with any angel you would like that you are aware of or your uh, your guardian angel, like whomever is all great. I also bring, excuse me, into my work, Raphael, which really brings in illumination and takes you out of that feeling of separation. Gabriel brings direction to everybody and helps get rid of that ability to not trust. Celestina, such a delightful energy, and she's all on like creative expression. And that can be your voice and self-expression. Faith, well, faith is faith and freedom. And this is really digging deep into how you wish to present and how you wish to be with others. Cassiel is one for the heart. And it's all about unconditional love and healing any difficulties you may have had in the past. And when you connect with Cassiel and something comes up in the future, then she is right there for you to draw upon so your healing can be quicker and with more ease for you. We have Sarah and Sarah's all about empowerment and like just giving you that strength to know you can move forward. Michael, which we all probably know, or at least most of you will know, protection, safety, and helping us to move out of anything that could be fearful. And then Ariel also, um, with the soul's mission, has a component to of it within free will and helping you with your choices. So those are the angels. If you'd like to know more, let me know. Um, send me an email. I can talk to you more about them. I actually teach courses on how to work with them, whether it's in a specific modality or I have an online class that I teach, which takes you through and you connect to each and every one of those nine angels and we bring them in individually and you experience them in real time um, through guidance with myself, uh, through some energy work processes and some sacred geometry and some other hand mudras as well. So there's lots of ways that you can work with this gang. And I tell you, these healing angels, they're fantastic. So do you have to connect with them to have an empowered heart? No, not at all. You can do it without all of them. But there was just this idea that was coming in that some of you uh, would like to know about them. So yes, you do not need to connect in with the healing angels. You can do this through intention, through meditation, uh, perhaps through a spiritual yoga practice, chanting. There's so many ways, prayer, like, However your imagination feels drawn to connecting into your heart and the divine, go with it. Do I have specific ways I can teach you like that? Yes. Are they the only way? Absolutely not. And I really would encourage you to think twice about a person that gives you any advice saying there's only one way. There's not. And I know that that will bother some of you from some religious text perspectives. But from my place of belief, we have so many different religions and bodies of faith around our world because we are all different from each other. And they are all there for you to find the one that works for you. Now, most likely a lot of you are practicing what you were brought up in from your family of origin. Some of you will have left that behind and looked for something different. Neither's wrong. Neither is correct. It's finding what works for you. And when we work with what 
really connects to us and to our heart, then you have the greatest ability to come into that space of trust and knowing. You come into that space of being more open to receive information and guidance from that source. When you can remove the yeah buts or I believe this, but I cannot get behind this body of information, then you place yourself in perhaps um, a space where you are not as trustworthy of information overall. Going within, call it meditation if you want, just call it sitting quietly for 30 seconds or three minutes is great. You can use soul flegio frequencies on a very low level in the background to help or whatever form of music or singing bowls or whatever you want to support you and to help guide you. There's lots of guided meditations out there that you can access as well to help you come within and to be within your heart. Or just have the intention. Wake up in your morning and just before you, your feet actually hit the floor while you're still in that little hazy state, tell yourself that you are going to be heart-centered today. Tell yourself that you desire to have an awakened heart to guide you through your day. Maybe say it a couple of times, maybe say it once, but set the intention. Energy follows intention. So set the intention you wish to have. And then you can remind yourself during the day, randomly, post-it notes, alarm on your phone, sticker on your fridge, whatever you want. Or you can go into time for meditation or time when you're using your heart link. You can journal, have a pen and paper by you or a voice recorder, but there's some, there's a main value to pen and paper. Your mind gets engaged in a different way when you are writing. The sequence of events, the, the yeah, I don't want to get into it, but just like the sequence of events that need to happen for the thought to be there, for it to translate into the words in your mind and then to come out the pen onto the paper is very different than just thinking the thought and verbalizing it and putting it onto a voice recorder. So I, I do recommend writing things down. Create this space of allowing stillness and balance to come within you. When you, as I said, if you, when you're feeling that disconnect, then you are out of balance. Whether the male female sides are at such a, a difference in their presence or weight that it's causing discomfort. You know, when you're doing the fear thing, then you're likely out of balance with past and future. Bring that back into the present. When you are in that space of feeling alone, stop immediately. Say the word stop. And I tell you this all the time because it works. Stop. Check in. Find your heart. Put your hand on your chest. Pause. Wait to feel that movement under your hand of your heartbeat. Just focusing in like that, being still and waiting to feel it, connects you. It allows you that moment of trust. It shows you physically, with evidence of connecting into your heart. Then you can ask for those connections with angels or divine and ask for them to be present. Ask for a sign. 
create this dialogue, you can request that they have a, a way of letting you know when they're present. Like my itchy nose, that's just one of mine. I have a few. The more you do to create this empowered or awakened heart, the easier it will be to go through your day with ease and flow. Will you get moments of frustration? Yeah, of course, things will come up. But your way to handle it and to move through it will be different. There will always be crunchy bits in our lives. We are not in control of anything in the world other than ourself, our thoughts, and taking 100% 100 responsibility for ourself. So since we have no control over others, and you should not be believing you do have control over others, <laughs> that was firmly stated, <laughs> then you are not going to be able to predict exactly what's going to happen in your life. Life happens as the saying goes. All right, we're going to go to our third and final break. When we come back, I'm going to do my very best to wrap all this up for you so that you can get that sense of hopefully choosing to awaken your heart and to see the benefit that this will give you from this moment forward. And it can be this quick from this moment forward for the rest of your life. All right. This is a short break. So don't go away, everyone. We'll be back just in a couple of minutes here on the Inspired Choices Network. So uh, don't go away. Thanks. We all have different experiences with and definitions of kindness. These experiences and beliefs about kindness have influenced who we are today and how we see the world. The universe is always listening. So what are you telling the universe today? Tune in to Cultivating Kindness with Karen. Each week as Karen guides you to understanding how each choice you are making is either keeping you stuck or opening up the energy of empowerment for you. Listen to Cultivating Kindness with Karen. Wednesdays at 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1 p.m. Central Time, 12 p.m. Mountain Time, 11 a.m. Pacific Time on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. This is Cultivating Kindness with Karen. To participate in the program, join the live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also send an email to karen at karenlesley.ca. Now, back to the program. Welcome back, everybody. So happy to have you here with me. Thank you so much. So this awakened heart thing, it is really important. I mean, it really is. It's always an option but it will make life easier for you. There's no question about it. When you are in that space of an empowered heart or awakened heart, you open up yourself to seeing far greater opportunities, possibilities, options around you and within you. You start to see yourself from a different perspective. You will potentially be more open to seeing aspects of you that maybe you don't enjoy that much. The reason you don't enjoy them is built upon judgments and beliefs and perceptions that you are currently holding that may actually not be true or accurate. It's just the way you're thinking right now. When you have this awakened heart, you are able to look at what is happening within you from perhaps a space of more love, but a space of less judgment. And it builds within you that uh, strength of letting go of judgments and agendas. You will create a life with more ease, more ease in the actual creation of things. And what you create will bring more ease to you. Hopefully that made sense. To be neutral and detached 
is a great strength of an empowered heart. Attachments and judgments are the rock solid foundation of difficulties for us all. You can be detached and not have um, a specific desire for a set outcome and be in that space of love and acceptance. However, it doesn't mean you will accept poor behavior to you or uh, poor behavior towards any other person or the world at large. It doesn't mean you become a jellyfish and you have no backbone. It grows your backbone. It allows you to tap into your soul's mission in a way that currently in this moment, truthfully, you are not aware of yet. It You may think you know, but trust me, when you have an awakened heart, it will I don't want to necessarily say change, but it will expand. You will see other elements and attributes of it that you're currently not aware of. And an awakened heart is always awakening more and more. It is not stagnant. It's not hit a certain level and then you're done and you're good. No, it's forever evolving. As you go through life and you, you build your awareness of things and you build that trust and confidence in you, your body, your heart, and divine, you open yourself up to see new things. And that will bring to you more opportunities to live your life in a far more empowered way. It really is empowered. And when your heart is in this space, it attracts to you people and places and situations and everything to support your soul mission, to support you and to enable you to move further, maybe quicker, I don't know, but it gives you more to work with and greater opportunities. An awakened heart or an empowered heart is phenomenal at setting things forward in motion and bringing ideas into your actual physical reality. And before we go, because we're running out of time here, I want to let you know that I have a really special show next week. Um, we have a guest. I don't have many guests, but I'm really excited to have Dr. Mary Morano join me next week. Uh, Dr. Mary is a beautiful, kind, intelligent, wonderful soul. And we are going to be talking together about change is a choice. Um Dr. Mary works with families, children, couples, and has a unique practice that will bring some wonderful insight into cultivating kindness with Karen next week. So I really hope that you will be joining us and, um, you know, come into the chat room to ask either myself or Dr. Mary questions if you would like. It will be a great, great show. So in the meantime, ask yourself, would you love to have an awakened heart? Is your body tingling? Is your body feeling lighter? Do you kind of giggle? Is there something there that we, you don't understand that is kind of like, oh, I wonder if that's my yes. It might be. I really hope that you can listen to this show a number of times or share it with others so that our world may be full of empowered and awakened. Thank hearts. you for listening to Cultivating Kindness with Karen. Karen Leslie returns Wednesdays at 2 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Central, 12 p.m. Mountain, 11 a.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. You can find Karen at KarenLeslie.ca and follow her on social media. Until next Wednesday, Karen is sending you waves of kindness for a fabulous week. Remember, it's only you who has the power to be and receive the kindness required to change your life. Thank you for listening to Cultivating Kindness with Karen. Karen Leslie returns Wednesdays at 2 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Central, 12 p.m. Mountain, 11 a.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. You can find Karen at KarenLeslie.ca and follow her on social media. Until next Wednesday, Karen is sending you waves of kindness for a fabulous week. 
Remember, it's only you who has the power to be and receive the kindness required to change your life.